eggs, the start of a population. But when are eggs, eggs? And what about if you have to count them, but can't actually find them? When egg counts determine the fate of a fishery, you'd think those doing the counting would have a good understanding of what a snapper egg looks like, from say, a King George Whiting egg, or even a salmon egg. But no, that's not been the case, especially for snapper. For all of those years up until now, the scientists doing the counting have been totally befuddled by the snapper eggs. Project leader with SARDI, Dr Mike Steer, says, and I quote, We can't rely on the human eye to successfully count and sort those eggs. This is because actually identifying snapper eggs was a very difficult, as snapper spawn during the warmer times of the year with a lot of other species. They also spawn generic looking fish eggs that look like other species. But in a world first, according to Sardi, they've now developed a molecular probe that turns snapper eggs bright blue. Technically, it's a piece of DNA that binds with the snapper DNA within the eggs and through a number of steps can turn that egg blue. Okay, I, I get it. It's great for one egg, but what about the tens of thousands they collect in order to do the count? They haven't said how that works, but they do say they have to crack the egg first in order to get to the embryo. So there's a lot of cracking going on before they turn blue. But still, someone has to count them, I would presume. So if this works, as Sadi claims, we should get a better understanding of the biomass of the snapper stocks. Sadi says once they count the eggs, they do a back calculation to find out how many females it took to produce those eggs and hence determine the current biomass of snapper. Pretty simple, huh? But let's throw in another curveball, just for good measure. There's now three separate snapper fish stocks across the state. Spencer Gulf West Coast stock, the Gulf St Vincent stock, and the Western Victorian stock, which spans Southeast South Australian and Western Victorian waters. This was discovered following research to investigate unexpected and relatively dramatic changes in the distribution of our snapper stocks. From 2007 onwards, things started to change. Catches in the northern Gulf St Vincent and southeast regions exploded, while those in the Spencer Gulf declined to record lows. In 2009, there was a shift from handlining to more efficient longlining technologies. Consequently, catches, fishing effort and catch rates increased dramatically. Reductions in gear methods and spatial closures were introduced because the egg counts differed greatly, and hence the biomass of snapper. So basically, Sadi have admitted that over the years before this new technique was recently developed, the egg count could be as robust as the recent recreational fishing survey results. Close your eyes and pick a number. And this comes from the world's best managed fishery. Sadi claims rather enthusiastically when heralding this new technique that it will be used to develop improved harvest strategies and to evaluate management strategies that are already in place, such as assessing the effectiveness of spawning closures. They're already working to extend the technique to King George Whiting. Let's have a guess on what colour that'll be. I'm betting on gold. So what about those eggs and the three different snapper stocks? How are the researchers going to know which stock the egg comes from? Especially seeing those in Port Phillip Bay travel on the current 600 kilometres to our southeast region. I hope they've ordered them sunny side up instead of scrambled.